Living in Virginia, you're in the fast lane on the information superhighway. We've invested $3 billion in Virginia's broadband network to give you one of the fastest internet connection speeds in the world, so you can build relationships, bring new business to our state, and meet the future of education. It's amazing what we can do together. Visit VCTA.com to learn how broadband connects the Commonwealth. Welcome to a special edition of Cable Reports brought to you by the Virginia Cable Telecommunications Association. I am Woody Evans. Today we are featuring a number of students from the Ella Baker Youth Leadership Program. Ella Baker was a prominent civil rights leader from the Commonwealth of Virginia. Ms. Baker spent her life fighting to empower disadvantaged groups and played a key role in the most influential civil rights, civil rights groups at the time such as the NAACP and Dr. King's Southern Christian Leadership Conference. These young leaders are junior and senior high school students from Northern Virginia, represented by 2nd District Delegate Member Jennifer Carroll Foy and 29th Senatorial District Member Senator Jeremy McPike. While here in Richmond, they are watching the legislative process, both in the House and Senate, meeting with policymakers, and visiting historical sites. Welcome to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to introduce them. Uh, Fatima Malik from Garfield High School, welcome. Thank you. India Mabry from Hilton High School, welcome. Thank you. Jordan Oliver from Hilton High School, Hello. welcome to you. And Taylor Lambard, welcome to you. You go to Mountain View High School. Yep. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about some of the people you have met so far here in Richmond. Well. It's, we've met a ton of amazing people. We met uh, Chris Sax Saxman, Chris, sorry, I Edmondson. never remember the name, Edmondson. Uh, we met with both of them at the same time, retired delegates, and it was really, really cool to be able to listen to their stories and see how they interacted with each other. Obviously, we met delegate uh, Jennifer Carroll Foy. She's an amazing person and really inspiring to see somebody uh, so young and amazing in our government and helping people. We actually met the governor today. He was really, really cool to talk to. Um, and the lieutenant governor, we met him yesterday, and that was also really interesting to listen to Mr. Fairfax speak. Great. Jordan, what, what are some of the other things you've been engaged in here? Well, we've been running around kind of crazy this whole um, weekend, but we've been able to sit in some committee meetings. Um, we've been able to go to the gallery um, and see what that whole process is, process is like in the house. Um, we've also been able to um, talk to the lieutenant governor, which was really cool, and sit in with some advocates and some other people, and they've just given us advice about the government and their job. So it's been really cool. That's great. And uh, India, why did you apply for this program and how did you get interested in it? Um, I applied because during uh, September and until Election Day, I worked on Jennifer Carroll Foy's campaign for delegate. And I saw that she had a scholarship for the Ella Baker um, Leadership Program that she was sponsoring, and I thought I would um, apply for it. And while we, during the application process, they had a question, um, like, what are problems in your community that are important to you? And I decided that uh, the treatment of mental, um, mental health in our community and the link between that and homelessness was a big problem. So I thought that there should be legislation in order to fix that. And Fatima, I understand you had the opportunity to sit in on an education committee uh, meeting. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so we went to the committee meeting yesterday and we heard various bills being proposed. Um, so we heard one about sunscreen that was about um, if schools should have unscented or scented sunscreen. And then we heard other things that um, were more fought over. Um, there was one about having um, or allowing homeschoolers to participate in um, sports and activities in public schools. So throughout the whole trip, all of the students that um, 
saw the committee meeting, we were all fighting over it, not fighting, but <laughs> arguing over what should happen. And then we, um, yeah, and then we saw something else that we were, um, we wanted to know what happened to it, but I don't think we heard what happened. Um. But it was about having, um, allowing businesses to put ads on school buses just to raise more funds for schools, yeah. Great, and, and Taylor, what, what have you been most impressed by uh, here in the legislature? Honestly, the personalities of the people we meet, because in school you learn about government and everyone seems all like stuffy and boring when you're in class and you're like learning history and all this other stuff. But then you come here and you meet them and it's like a bunch of live wires in a single room. And it is really, really cool to be able to sit back and watch it all go down and see that this is how our country's run and this is how our laws are made and how just the people are so cool to watch. And Jordan, what's most important to you in terms of being here as a high school student? Um, I believe the exposure that I've gotten being here and just being able to meet professionals, um, people that are in this field, um, people that do what I aspire to be, lawyers, um, doctors, pediatricians, neurologists, all these people are very intelligent people and they've been able to um, kind of like guide us or give us guidance along our way. So as we go into college and we go into the next stages of our life, we're able to use their advice and their guidance. What's been the biggest surprise for you, India? Um, the biggest surprise is that in, on television you see that um, Republicans and Democrats don't get along and you think that it's a huge fight back and forth, but really sitting down with former senators, who one who was a Republican and one who was a Democrat, you notice that they're all just people and like they actually get along well and not every problem is a bipartisan issue. Uh, what did you know before you came here versus what you know now? Um, before coming here, I knew that they would be in session fighting over bills and stuff like that. But then I learned that there's more to bills um, and there's more that they have to do. So I didn't know they would um, wake up at like five and like go to sleep or, um, or work till like eight or nine. So we met with um, Senator um, McPike, yeah, and he was at dinner yesterday, and he was telling us how he has, um, he was working really hard. He he started in the morning, but then um, he, when he ha goes home, he still has to read so many other bills and make sure everything is all set for the next day. Yeah. I understand you had a chance to meet with the governor and the lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Uh, the Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax, he was really nice, he was really fun, he was really charming, and he, had, he was great. Um, it, was, it was an honor to be able to sit and listen to him talk. Um, I actually get to, I got to sit next to the governor this morning on his left side, um, and he was really engaging. He cared what we, were, what we had to say. Uh, we asked him questions about all different kinds of things, uh, and he answered them, and he was really nice, and it was just a total honor to be able to meet both of them. What were your impressions of those meetings? Um, they're very humble and down-to-earth people. I think sometimes we put um, our elected officials on a pedestal and we can't see them as human beings. And Justin Fairfax, he's very, very personable, very nice. Um, and same with our governor. He really does care about our issues. So what advice would you give to some of your colleagues uh, back home in terms of uh, uh, what's happening here in Richmond? Um, I would say to get involved. It's very important that kids our age are involved in the elective process. Like, we finally get the chance to vote, and I think that we should take that opportunity. Great. Well, it's been so nice of all of you to be here today, and I hope this experience is a very positive one for you, and hopefully all of you will stay involved in politics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for watching this special edi edition of uh, Cable reports, uh, stay tuned as we engage with other students from Northern Virginia. The ability to connect fuels our lives. And in Virginia, we connect faster than almost anyone in the world. Our peak average internet connection speeds put us in an elite class, both in the United States and across the globe. Broadband in Virginia helps us learn bigger, work smarter, and love uninterrupted. Visit VCTA.com to learn how broadband connects the Commonwealth. 
Welcome back to a special edition of Cable Reports as we continue our discussions with young leaders from the Ella Baker Youth Leadership Program and the Greater Prince William Young Leaders Group. I uh, want to introduce them in turn. Uni Masseray from Garfield High School. Good to see you, Good sir. Good to see you too, sir. Brandon Morales, welcome. Garfield High School. Thank Good you. to see you. Megan Black, Patriot High School. Good to see you. Thank you. And Jackie Parker, Garfield High School. Megan, you are outnumbered here for some reason. <laughs> Garfield for the win. Uh, Jackie, how has your overall experience here in Richmond been so far? Well, I hope I can speak for the whole group as a whole, but our experience has been highly informative about how everything works with the legislative body and everything like that. So it's been a great experience, and it's just really helpful to open my eyes to what is going on in the community around me and everything in general. So. Megan, I understand you had the opportunity to attend a press conference sponsored by the uh, Legislative Black Caucus as they talked about a very interesting subject, the schoolroom to the uh, 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 prison pipeline. Mm -hmm. So um, they talked about how a lot of kids are going from school to the prison system and a lot of that issue comes with being African American or having a learning disability. And so mass incarceration is something that I'm really passionate about ending in America because we have a really big problem. So getting to sit in and learn about the legislation that was trying to fix that was really amazing. And Brandon, I understand you were able to have a conversation and meet with the Lieutenant Governor of the state of Virginia. Talk yes. to us about that experience. Um, it was um, it was a great experience to actually meet him in person, and it's really um, it was a really nice experience because at the end of the day, we're all humans, and even though they believe all these things or they do certain things, um, at the end, we we all just want the best for um, Virginia for our state, and it was really um, a great experience. Great. And I understand you had an opportunity to, to attend a committee uh, hearing uh, that discussed issues around education. Yes, sir. So that meeting also was very uh, informative, you could say. And I really found it. I really found it very interesting because the way they argued different, many different bills, such as the bill for advertising advertisements on buses or public transports for schools, and many different things were just spoken about. And another one which I found very hilarious was the one with the sunscreen, scented sunscreen, with the fragrance and everything. I really find that interesting, and I like the little uh, conversations or you could say arguments they had. To, uh, when one side would approve of the one one side of the committee would approve, and the other side would oppose uh, and state the reason why. I found it very interesting. And Jackie, what have you been most impressed with in terms of your legislators here? Um, I've just been impressed overall with how like formal the like everything has been going, and because coming from high school, you know you could dress however you want to dress. You could you know use a whole bunch of slang, but when it comes to this, it's like really formal and it kind of prepares me for the future and business. So. And Megan, why did you apply uh, to come here to Richmond? I'm really passionate about politics. It's what I want to go into. So being able to witness how the legislature works was really amazing. And Brandon, what about you? What motivated you to apply for um, this program? I also really like politics and I would like to be um, the future president of the United States. <laughs> All right. But, um, but for now, I'm taking little steps um, to get there. And Uni, do you have a passion for politics and elected office, you think? I have a passion for politics, but my main passion usually falls under like the medical field as well. So I really want to be like an orthopedic surgeon, but pa uh, politics is also ties into that. So I really have that little passion there as well. Jackie, what's been your biggest surprise since you've been here? Hmm. That's a good question, to be honest. Um, <laughs> my biggest surprise, I think just meeting all the like governors like like the lieutenant governor Brandon was talking about and just you know seeing what they're about and how they want to run Virginia and how they want to you know impact education and everything. So. Megan tell us a little bit about what you have learned about the process here that you didn't know before you got here. Um, so I'm really politically aware I think I knew a lot more than other students did <laughs> um, but we met with two former delegates and they were, uh, there was one that was a Democrat and one that was a Republican. And the way that they got along and were able to find common ground was really inspiring to me because I'm very far left, so I don't usually, it's hard for me to find common ground, but the Democratic delegate um, found an issue that both her and Bob Marshall were passionate about. So that was just really cool for me to see and gave me hope for the future. 
And Brandon, have you been involved in any political campaign since you want to become president? Um, no, I haven't been involved, but I feel like um, applying to this program was um, the beginning of what I can do. It, this experience has been great, and I'm going to apply for more. And, and Uni, uh, you want to pursue uh, medicine. There are a number of physicians in, in the House of Delegates, so yes, that, that shouldn't preclude you from running for office. But as you know, health care is, is a big issue yes, in sir. the Commonwealth. Have you heard much uh, discussions about that since you've been here? Yes, we have. Actually, today we were talking to Governor Ralph Northam, and we were talking about the health care issue, and he, he was going to he was trying to propose something called the uh, Medicare expansion, where they would extend Medicare to many different families without it, and they will also open it up to different families across the United States. I'll, I'll correct you in one respect. It's not yes, Medicare. That's for people like me. Oh, it's okay. Medicaid. <laughs> Medicaid. Sorry, sir. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> and Jackie, um, what about the legislative process that uh, uh, surprised you? All these surprises, <laughs> you know, but um, like this was more of like a learning. So it's like I was really focused on everything, you know, but it was just like crazy how that's like the way that they do it is like, yeah, you're new or whatever. So it's crazy. Yeah, it's just a crazy experience. <laughs> now, since you're a political junkie, how do you compare what goes on here versus what goes on in Washington, D.C.? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it seems to be a lot more civil here. Um, I'm not really. I'm not really sure how to answer that. Um, I also know a lot of these people individually. Like I've worked with Lee Carter and Danica Rome's campaigns, so being able to like see their people here was kind of comforting. Like as opposed to Washington D.C., I'm not. I don't know many of those people. Brandon, did you have any idea of how hard these people work? Um, no, I didn't really know, but. Um when I got into his program and the first day I saw everybody working really hard, they had a busy schedule and it was it was so impressive how their work ethic was just 100% they were just putting in the work and I was really surprised by that. And you are you are you impressed with the with the work ethic here? Yes sir, I'm very impressed with the work ethic actually. Um so like for coming in here, I I knew somewhat that there were like the delegates were going to be very busy, very very busy, but I didn't know that they required so much assistance from like so many different people because one of our delegates that we met with, uh, Delegate Kara Foy, um, she actually had like four assistants with her. So that just showed that they're, they're very busy. Each day they go into work. Jackie, what are you going to take home with you from this experience? Um, knowledge is the biggest thing, just knowing what is going on with bills and everything that I'm going to be keeping up with, hopefully. <laughs> Well, well, thank you all for being here with us. You're a great group of students. I, I hope you become political leaders in, in the near future. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, stay tuned as we continue further discussions with more students from Prince William County, Virginia. Virginia isn't just for lovers. Virginia is for workers, for learners, and for doers. We've invested more than $3 billion in Virginia's broadband network in the last decade because we believe in you. Broadband gives you the connection you need to solve challenges, make discoveries, and keep us at the forefront of innovation. Visit VCTA.com to learn how broadband connects the Commonwealth. If you're just joining us, we're continuing our discussions with uh, high school students with the Greater Prince William Young Leaders Group. Welcome. I want to introduce first Josh Hart, from Osborne High School. Welcome, Josh. Good to see you. Thank you, Woody. Uh, Matias Peniagua, good to see you. I think you're at Manassas Park High School. Yes. Zara Sheik, Stonewall Jackson High School, and Matthew Brown, Manassas Park High School. Welcome to you all. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, Matthew, I understand that uh, there's a real highlight you want to talk about with us today. I think you met the governor. Uh, uh, Virginia, yeah. talk to us about that experience. Yes, today I met the governor, and it was a great experience. You know, it was really comforting to know that he was kind of on our side towards education and getting like more funding for college students. You know, it's really like affecting my future too in a positive outcome. And, and Zara, we understand we're going to turn turn to sports for a question <laughs> with you because I know you want to discuss uh, to some extent the 
Tim Tebow legislation yeah. that, that uh, you heard a debate about mm -hmm. recently. Tell us about that. Well, we actually had the opportunity to sit in committee, and so we saw the bill be introduced and again argued for and against. And so it plays into education with the homeschool aspect, and so I think it was just really cool to see um, it actually be discussed and actually shot down this year, but the fact that it continues to come up is really interesting to me. Matias, you, you, you were there too, as I understand. Yeah, it was really great because um, just to see the process of it, you know, when, when they said, if, anyone ha if anyone's against it, please rise, and it was like a group of people just stood <laughs> up and just like got in a line and started arguing <laughs> against it, and I was like, it was really eye-opening because I, I, um, I always heard about the government and I always read about it, but it's really eye-opening when you come here and you actually witness it. So that was a really great experience, and I um, want to thank uh, Senator McPike for you know giving this opportunity because I met yeah. some of the like best people around. You know, we may not have the same um, views. Like me and Zara have very <laughs> different views, but um, it's fun to interact and discuss because it's it's a friendly discussion, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what this program is about. And it's it's an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. And Josh, tell us what you've learned about the legislative process. I know you've had an opportunity to observe the Senate and sit yeah. in some committee meetings. So we started um, out uh, observing uh, the committee on education, and that's where we uh, saw the Tim Tebow bill. And we saw a lot of important stuff being discussed, like uh, putting advertisements on buses. But there's just some like weird legislation too. Like they were talk, they went on for like a, f a good five minutes about how we should package sunscreen to school students. Like it's stuff like that you never really think about, and it's really not important to that many people. But you know that someone is very passionate about <laughs> packaging this sunscreen, right? And they even went into like the whole scent of it. Yeah. Like this needs Can to be, it be certainly fragrant packaged. Or not? Yeah, like. It's, it's something that probably no one here really cares about, but someone out there cares about it. And I think it's awesome how they're being represented by their, like, um, their delegate. And um, then we moved on to the Senate, and it was really cool to watch how kind of, we never saw like one um, bill go from committee to the House of um, Delegates and then to Senate, but we did see um, Senate in action on a gambling bill. Basically, it um, stated that if you were uh, at some point on government welfare, then uh, a portion of your winnings from the lottery over like $25,000 would go back to the government. Mm -hmm. And it was a really close vote. We weren't there for the actual voting, but we looked up after. And it was um, like 21 to 19, which was really close to a tie. And um, it was split like right along party lines, which is mm -hmm. a lot of interesting. Jeffrey, what, what has surprised you about the, the legislative process? Ooh, um, I guess like how they're able to manage so much people in the Senate gallery because I just go to class in government with only like 30 people and it is like a huge mess in there so with a room of like 40 I was kind of like wondering how they were able to just kind of control that and I thought that was really kind of interesting. And of course Zara think how it, more difficult it is to manage 100 delegates yeah, on like, the House of Delegates side. Mm -hmm. It, I, they kind of explained to us the difference between Senate and House because we discussed how we thought the Senate floor would have been more professional in a sense. Yeah. <laughs> we saw senators like There's kind like of grouping corner. and like laughing and chatting and then they've been talking about uh, you know bills and everything but you know we heard like soda cans opening and <laughs> they're eating their lunch and it was kind of interesting because if it's the same space they told us that they share um, the same room size for the Senate and the House and so just packing all those people in there must be, I can't imagine how much more rowdy it must be. <laughs> <laughs> Matthias, what, what has impressed you about, about the legislative process and the members in general? Oh, just how um, great they work together because when I, when I first started um, hearing about the government, Democrats and Republicans, I always thought that they, they, they hated each other. <laughs> and we had a, we had a, a, we had a meeting with um, um, Chris, Chris Saxman and, uh, and Chris, Edmondson. Edmondson. Edmondson, yes. And they're two different. One is Republicans, one is Democrat. And just how well they communicate and how, how like, they seem like best friends, you know. It was so eye-opening, like, oh, they, they get along just like me and my friends in school. So the way that, um, I forget who explained it to me, is like, um, Congress is basically like high school. And you have to get along with everyone because you're going to need someone for a one vote. You might, not, you might not need them for today, but tomorrow you might need them for a next vote. So you always, always want to keep an open mind and be polite and happy and uh, be helpful to everyone in, um, in, the con in the Congress and Senate. Josh, what, what motivated you to, to apply for, for this program? 
Well, I was just, I'm, I, I'm in the Model UN Club, and there's a lot of uh, parliamentary like procedure that goes on in that, and it's like a kind of a strict formula. So first off, I, I wanted to see like if they kind of followed the same rough idea, which they do. And um, I'm just kind of interested in politics. I don't really want to, I don't know what I want to do when I grow up, but this is something I may be interested in. So it was really awesome just to see this, like what it's like in real life rather, rather than just like reading about it online. And Matthew, do you think uh, this experience uh, has encouraged you to uh, maybe pursue uh, uh, politics? Ooh, I mean, kind of torn between, I mean, I, I see all the work people are doing because I saw Senator Pike be at the Center Gallery like for hours because like we went, like we started up like two or like three and then like later at like dinner, we were still seeing him at the Center Gallery on our phones. So, you know, I don't know. Like what about you, Zara? Has this whole experience discouraged you maybe about politics? Um, I, I don't think so. I really want to pursue engineering, but I've enjoyed seeing all these politicians come from different backgrounds. Like they've been doctors and lawyers. And so I think, if anything, I'll do a minor in uh, political science and I might advocate. So. So have you met any advocacy groups, groups that actually come in and talk to the, the members about their specific interests and their positions on bills? Yes, we talked to um, two groups, actually. Um, one was um, uh, uh, 21, Virginia 21, Virginia 21. and it was basically a like, uh, advo advocacy group that was run by uh, college students, people around that age. And they fought for uh, like college college bills, bills that would help them in the future and us in the future. And that really opened my eyes because I'm I'm actually look, I'm actually going to look uh, the night we came back. I looked them up, and I'm planning to uh, you know at least talk to them and see if I can join the organization because that seems like a great because I'm I'm personally into politics, and it's not something maybe I want to do in the future because I want to be an engineer also. But I will. I think everyone should try to um, be involved in their government and uh, pursue that. So yeah, I, I, I love it. Great. Well, it's been wonderful uh, talking to you all. We're impressed with your leadership and hope uh, you follow politics as a result of this experience. <laughs> Thank you for watching this special edition of Cable Reports brought to you by the Virginia Cable Telecommunications Association. Until next time, I'm Woody Evans. Mm-hmm.